Hi, my name is Jordan Geisert, and today I'm going to do a little vlog on the Charles Dickens Museum in London. Let's get started. First, we go into the entrance hall. Dickens was very proud of this house because of its literary connection to Shakespeare. On the wall to the right, you see Dickens' handwriting from his time at Doughty Street. And on the left are framed documents that represent each of the author's homes from 1837 onwards. The novel Nicholas Nickleby was written here at Doughty Street. Next, we go into the dining room. It was a huge part of Dickens' lifestyle back in the late 1830s. At this time, he was a rising success, so he liked to entertain his friends he made in the literary and artistic world, as well as his family. And on one occasion, 14 dinner guests were squeezed into this tiny room. Next, we head into the kitchen. It had many uses in this home. Not only were there meals cooked here, but it was a hub for the servants to socialize. On many occasions, it served as a bedroom, sitting area, and dining room for household staff. Even though it was very highly used, it was a very unpleasant place to be. There was little natural light or fresh air, and the fire was left burning all day, leaving dust and soot everywhere. The scullery and wash house was where much of the general household work was carried out. Here the maid would wash clothes and dishes, boil water, iron, and on occasion prepare food for cooking. Next is the wine cellar. Bottles of wine, sherry, brandy, and champagne for as many social gatherings would have been stored here. Here you see the drawing room, which is the largest room in the house and an important space for Dickens. At a young age, he performed many improvised theatricals for his visitors at his parents' home. And as an adult, he organized other theatricals and reading aloud from his own works whenever he had an audience. Here is his study, where he spent a lot of time writing. Dickens' working day followed a strict routine. He wrote between breakfast and lunch with no distractions. And rumor has it, this might have been the very desk that he wrote Oliver Twist at. This is Dickens' bedroom. When he moved to this house, his appearance and lifestyle were highly influenced by the Regency period, which carried through to this bedroom. In this room, his wife Catherine gave birth to two baby girls. Next to this room is the dressing room, which was mainly for Dickens' preparations, while Catherine carried out her dressing in the bedroom. Here is the Mary Hogarth room, named after the tragic death of his sister-in-law, Mary Hogarth. It was a shock because she was only 17 years old and had apparently been in good health. The items on display in this room reflect the theme of disease and death in Dickens' life and work. Dickens adored Mary and it was a very tragic event in his life. It took him several months to recover and begin to write again. Here is the nursery. In Dickens' time, the third floor would have been the nursery and servants' room. It was this area of the house that Dickens' visitors would not have seen because servants and children were meant to be seen and not heard at that time. And finally, here is the servants' bedroom. Ever since the publication of Oliver Twist, Dickens has been regarded as a writer of and for the people. He put into words the feelings, thoughts, expectations, fears, and hopes of a nation like no other. Today his writings are still as relevant as ever. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and it was very informative. I'd also like to say thanks to my new friend Ben who gave me my tour. 